Hi, Pastor Rebecca here at Duluth Gospel Tabernacle, and we are doing the COVID Bible studies. I hope you're enjoying them as much as I am. This is my COVID Bible study book where we, we're studying the book of Ephesians. And today is COVID Bible study number 10. And we, so what we do is we like to set up um, our Bible study by saying the date. Oh, I forgot. I like to put what day it is. So, so put the day of the week you're doing this. And then, um, on 2020, I don't know about you, but I like to make them into little, um, little COVID, uh, germs. So here's a scoop. We're studying the book of Ephesians. It's written by Paul, the apostle Paul. He wrote it from jail. He called, they called it the prison letter, prison epistle. Epistle is the same word as letter. If this is new for you, write that down because a part of studying the Bible is just putting your thinking cap on and figuring things out, learning, asking questions. Um, today, we're, you're going to want to put on the head Ephesians. Um, to where it's believe it or not we're only doing two verses but oh my word it is going to blow your mind because it's so good two verses today remember um we are calling the covid bible study paul was the wrote the prison epistles or letters we're doing the covid bible study and um interesting enough when you read ephesians when it starts right off, it doesn't say, hi, Paul, in prison. It doesn't say that. But um, today you'll see the second time that he references that he's a prisoner. So we're going to read two verses. Um, we're doing the draw a method. If you don't know the draw method, um, it is uh, D stands for draw, discover, for actually discover, and then draw what, you, what you've discovered, draw or doodle. The R stands for read and reread and then write it out using write, not with the W. Um, and then the uh, A stands for apply and analyze. And the D stands for walk it out, which is, you know, applying it. Okay, two verses. Chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. I do the New Living Version, my favorite version. Today we're going to make it a little smaller uh, Bible study, but it'll be good. Okay, it says, therefore, what have you learned? Whenever you read the word there for, you always want to ask, what is it there for? So you want to put over on the top, you want to put there for. And then you want to put a big question mark because that's your answer today. You want to know what is it there for? So therefore, so what's he doing? He's writing this as a response to the prayer he just prayed. Remember, he prayed for you. Do you remember that? He prayed that your heart would be would be the home of Jesus, that it would be grounded or rooted and grounded in God's love, and that you would know how wide and deep and high God's love is, and that you would learn um, to, uh, um, you know, be strengthened with God's love and understand what you have. And then at the end, remember we did the toast. So after that, then he's going therefore. And he goes, I, a prisoner, serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling. Interesting enough, what he's doing here is he goes, I'm praying this all for you. And because I'm praying this for you, therefore, I'm going to beg you to do something. So what I put is we find, see, it says, therefore, I, so I, Paul, a prisoner. So here it is. He's a prisoner for serving the Lord. And then he says, I plead with you. I beg you. And so I wrote what he said, did. It says, beg you to live a life worthy of the calling. So he, this isn't just, oh, it's please, please, please. And so then he says, I want you to live a life worthy of the calling. And today when we did our Bible study, I asked the kids, what does that mean? What does living a life worthy of the calling look like to you? It means if Jesus calls you to be a Christian, then live like a Christian. So if Jesus calls you to be to, to follow him, follow him. Live a life worthy. Now, interesting enough, we talked, and you can talk right now. What does living a life worthy mean? Remember, he's already told us that the gift is free. 
He didn't say live a life worthy so you can go to heaven. He's like, because of all this, therefore. So remember, therefore, because of all of this, not, not, um, not to get all of this, but because of all this, that's what the therefore means. Because of all this, because he chose you before the world to live a life worthy because he's he's chosen you now to be one family with his chosen people because it's a free gift not anything you can do i'm begging you to live a life worthy and what is a live life worthy he says he tells you and this was so so cool the kids and i lear learned this today that this he's not like live a life worthy of the calling figure it out he goes this is how you're supposed to live now we talked today about living in a family and we actually had parents like giving you scores and it says what's the worthy the life worthy of the calling always be humble and gentle i love that always be humble and gentle be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults oh I just love this. Making allowance for each other's faults. Is a mom with two children still in their teens? Oh my word. Mind blowing. I don't even know why I haven't taught my kids this verse. Making allowance for each other's faults. That means if you have a fault and it's annoying to me, as someone who's living a life worthy of the calling, I'm going to make allowance for it. I'm going to be like, okay. And making allowance for something, boy, I wonder if I have a string. I really don't. But what I do have is I have a t-shirt, okay? So here, okay, it. so you, you see there's not much allowance. But if I do this, now there's a lot of allowance. Do you see that? This is like, you better be good or I'm not going to like you. If you're not nice to me, I'm not going to be nice to you. If you don't share your toys with me, I'm not going to share your toys with me. Making allowance is, you see, now there's a lot of wiggle room. Do you see that? So there's a lot of wiggle room. Here, no wiggle room. You're not nice to me. I'm not going to be nice to you. That's the opposite of making allowance. This, all kinds of allowance. Do you see how all that kinds of allowance... God wants us to make allowance for those other people's faults because of your love. And then he says, make every effort, make every effort. Making every effort, you guys, is huge. Making every effort. So you get an argument with your brother's sister and your mom says you need to fix this. And if you go and say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And they go, no, I'm not going to forgive you. And you go, okay, well, whatever. That's not making every effort. Making every effort would be, okay, do you want to go bike riding with me? Okay, um, you know, how can I fix this? Uh, next day, hey, do you want to read a book? I mean, it's making every effort. And moms and dads, this is like huge for us in our marriages and in our relationships with our children as well. So he says, always be humble. And then he's also saying, always be gentle because always humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. This is huge. What's a life worthy of the calling? It's humble, patient, um, gentle, um, uh, making allowance for each other's faults, make every effort to keep yourself unified in the spirit. So unified in the spirit. You guys, isn't this a wonderful life verse for a family? That the family would be unified in the spirit, binding yourself together in peace. And I didn't even catch that today in the first the Bible study. And one little boy drew a picture of himself with peace all around him, binding him. And so in this, I don't know if you can see, I drew me and then I drew somebody else in my family. And then I put vines around and I put patience, kindness, peace, humble, humility. I put, um, uh, there's another word, what word? Humility, um, humble, gentle, allowance for each other peace and love and I just circled these two people with all of those things because that's what God wants us to do 
And then, um, uh, I, um, I talked to the kids about that. And while I'm doing that, one of the kids said, love is patient, love is kind. It is not rude, it is not proud, it, and, and started saying a cross-reference. So remember, cross-reference. So let's put a, um, I have to get my marker here. I lost my marker. So let's put a cross, because remember we said we're going to put a cross-reference. And he put 1 Corinthians 13 and he didn't even remember the, the thing he just used his mind and it, he began to see that what he was reading in ephesians is something he had learned in the bible before that's called cross-referencing so i put a cross and i put first corinthians 13 and then i put love i, I actually drew out that so love is patient, love is kind. And I'm going to read it to you so you will you will see exactly what I mean that what we're doing is we're just using our brain and the Bible is teaching the Bible. Does, do you understand what I mean? It's like the Bible is teaching the Bible. Oh, mind blowing. Okay. Um, it says, he says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. What's the opposite of boastful or proud? humble okay or rude it does not demand its own way it is not irritable and it keeps no record of wrong what is that making allowance for each other's faults did you realize that that those cross reference interesting enough i looked in my cross referencing and i expected it to cross reference to 13 and it didn't but it did cross reference to 12 and 13 where it says the human body has many parts but many parts make up one whole so it is the body of Christ cuz actually our next verse that we're not studying today actually says for there is one body one spirit just as you have been called to one glorious hope so he's asking us to become the family of God but this this you know is a great thing now the other thing i think of is i also think of galatians i think it's galatians going to look in Galatians. I think it's Galatians. Um, for the fruit of the Spirit. But the whole, yeah, because in Galatians 5, 22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So there's another cross-reference. So I'm going to put Galatians 5 over here. And here's the thing about this cross-reference cross. You can, if you read a scripture someday with your mom or dad and it cross-references, go back to your COVID Bible study and write in. The idea is using our brain and thinking. And so today, the walkout thing is um, that, that I wrote is live a life worthy of the calling. So I put live a life. That's my application, live a life. And then in my other step, I put be humble, kind, peaceful, patient, loving, worthy. And then in my verse, I wrote, Dear Jesus, please help me live a life worthy of the calling. And I put, please help me make allowances for others' faults. Because God really spoke to me in that. And this is what's so cool about this particular item. Is I want to encourage you to talk to your mom and dad. How am I doing with my brothers and sisters? Am I patient? Am I kind? Am I humble? Am I binding myself in peace? This all comes out of understanding, therefore, who you are in Christ, understanding that you've been called, understanding that the free gift of God is yours. This isn't what we do to get to heaven, but it's what we do because we believe in Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoyed your COVID Bible study number 10 today, and I hope that God's going to really help you live a life worthy of the calling. If you have not asked Jesus into your heart, today's the day. He has called you. He has chosen you before he created the world. He chose you to be holy and acceptable. He wants that relationship with you. That's his chosen part of you. So if you haven't asked Jesus into your heart, will you do that right now? 
Fold your hands, close your eyes, and say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I know that Jesus, you, died on the cross for me. Please come into my life, take my sins away, and Holy Spirit, live in me. Help me to live a life worthy of the calling. I want to be humble, patient, kind, uh, loving, making allowances for other people's faults, and, and living with peace. Amen. When I did that, making allowance for other people's faults, doesn't it sound like a, a, a famous prayer? Forgive us our trespasses, our faults, as we forgive those who trespass, who fault against us. So I think you need to put in there Matthew 5. That's the Lord's Prayer in your cross-reference. Have a good day. Blessings. Bye.